Do you like GPU Super Series? Because we might be getting another one from AMD this time. Amazon is shutting down Alexa, set an alarm for 3 a.m. And we might be getting 12 channels of memory. Wow, my brain's not big enough to handle that. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. So buckle up, get ready for your third breakfast, and let's go ahead and talk about a super series that might be in development from AMD. This is according to reports coming out of video cards that the next generation of laptop GPUs from AMD at this current point look to be a little different than what we were expecting them. Currently, we actually even haven't gotten the full-fledged 6,000 series of laptop GPUs out from them, but that's neither here nor there. AMD hasn't really excelled at laptop GPUs, but the indication is here that instead of getting slightly higher clock speeds on stuff or just a minor tweaking of names refresh, what actually could be happening is that there will be a 6000S refresh, which might stand for super, might stand for secondary sequel squawk, who knows what it's gonna be called, but the key difference here is that it's gonna be based on TSMC's six nanometer production as opposed to to the current seven nanometer production that AMD's GPUs are based on, which according to reports would mean that it has better power efficiency and potentially even higher clock speeds to make it at least a little bit better of a GPU to come out. So a 6800S that's based on the 6800M's amount of cores, but would actually be faster or more power efficient to deliver better battery life or better performance on laptops. There's no indication whether or not this might actually come out to desktops at this point. It's currently rather speculative whether or not it's gonna be coming out to just any consumer whatsoever, considering the fact that AMD still hasn't released like the full lineup of their laptop GPUs, but it is intriguing. Are you in favor of companies kind of doing this TikTok refresh when it comes to their GPUs? Like we're expecting Nvidia to give us the 3090 Ti in a few weeks. Is that okay with you? Or is obviously this conversation just hampered by the fact that you don't have a GPU, but according to the poll that I did, there's like 39% of you who have a th RTX 30 series or an RX 6000 series. So for those of you who are in that group, does it matter whether or not the next generation supersedes your generation? Does it need to be a huge improvement or can it just be like a slight refresh? Do we have to have huge leaps in performance every year or can it come every two years? Let me know what you think of the upgrade cycle down below in the comments. But Microsoft wants to upgrade your experience with your video cards by making it so that the DX12 API now has H.264 and H.265 encoding, which can make it a lot easier for game developers out there because previously the way that it was done was they would have to figure out H.264 encoding depending on what GPU you have rather than doing it through the DirectX API that it made it a little bit more cumbersome but now that Microsoft is going to support that directly on the API it should be a little easier for companies to program for this and according to reports AMD GPUs currently aren't supported they're supposed to be getting support in Q2 of 2022 but in case you're running Intel or Nvidia you're good as gold which not sure this solves all of the problems but obviously you have to wait till the middle of next year in case you're on Team Red. And if you're on Team Halo Infinite Steam Edition, you're not gonna get cross save. There's currently a bug that's out there that if you have Halo Infinite, but you got it on Steam as opposed to the Xbox Store, which has gotten better recently. I'm actually really impressed with it. Uh, you can't actually use your cross saves on anything else. You have to have the Windows Store Edition. Whether or not that affects you, that it's probably a very small amount of people. Speaking of small, that's the price you wanna pay on tech products. So we got UFD deals, my friends. We got another good deal on a Seasonic power supply, the Focus PX750 80 Plus Platinum coming in at $75 after a mail-in rebate card, currently going for $90 plus a $15 rebate. Great price for 750 watts of power. In case you want 500 gigs storage, WD Black's SN750 SE is going for on sale right now for $50, which for a 500 gigabyte PCI Express 3.0 drive is a really good price on that. And then EVGA has their X15 MMO gaming mouse with all of those side buttons. It's got 20 buttons on this gosh dang thing going for $30 over on Newegg right now. And you wanna talk about discounts, you wanna talk about steep price reduction, you wanna talk about blood in the market. Let's get into crypto stocks. Bitcoin down 6.63% as of the time of filming, down below $50,000 yet again to be at 47,481. Ethereum also down 7.3% to sit at $4,098. Dogecoin also down 5.62% to be at 17 cents. But the meme stonks were not spared 
in this bloodbath. GameStop currently down 10.6% on the day. $155.19 is where it's currently sitting at. AMC likewise down roughly 10%, 9.3% to sit at just under $30. Ouchie wouchie, markets go bad. Boom, boom, downward. I'm great at descriptors. I should write a book and you should help kickstart fundraise for that. And Kickstarter can now use the blockchain. They're switching over to use the blockchain. Kickstarter announcing that they want to develop an open source protocol that will essentially create a decentralized version of Kickstarter's core functionality to allow people to have a decentralized version of what already exists and that they're going to be using the CeeLo open source blockchain because it uses proof of stake, which is a bit more environmentally friendly, but that this will also be open source so that competitors of Kickstarter can also use their platform in case you want to do it. But we all know crowdfunding was only made possible by blockchain, not possible before blockchain, only now that blockchain is here. And in case you want to send money to people on WhatsApp, you can now use the Novi money transfers that are coming on WhatsApp from the meta company who are implementing this on this is currently only available in the US to a select amount of people who can send and receive money to each other using Facebook stuff, which don't like that. Don't like it one bit, not gonna use it. Sorry, Facebook, you're not gonna get me into the meta, okay? Even though you're opening up Horizon Worlds, which is your new VR meta platform that you want me to join so that I can be part of the metaverse. No, thank you. I like having legs, all right? Number one, gotta answer this question. Are butts legs? Is butts legs? Is butt legs? Did, what, are they? Is, is butt legs? I need to know the answer to that. But number two, I need my butt and my legs. What is this? What is this experience that they're now unveiling to everybody? This Facebook horizon, weird Roblox concept of not having gargantuan men with legs. Anyways, it's available to people in the US and Canada as of yesterday who are 18 and up and have an Oculus Quest so that you can participate in this new metaverse that is just essentially VR Roblox made by Facebook which again, after they've treated Web 2.0, why would you trust them with the metaverse? Why would anybody do this? I just don't fundamentally understand it. This is something that I've been trying to like wrestle with in trying to understand the concept of Web 3 and metaverse, and especially like Facebook's push towards metaverse. And it's just, the social media, at least in my mind, came about because people who were tech savvy and also young people picked up on it really quickly. It intuitively made sense as a way to connect the world. I'm finding it hard to believe that Facebook is getting people who have that same sense about them, that intuitively this yes is the next step because I used to be one of those people. Have I aged out of the category where I'm on the bleeding edge of stuff? I don't know if that's the case, but right now I'm sitting here and just being like, why do I need that? Like that's not solving any problem I had. Facebook, when it launched, was a way to for me to keep connected with the people that I went to high school with as I was going off to college. Previous to that, you really either didn't have contact with them or there was that like stupid like classmates.com website that you had like high school and middle school reunions on well before that where you connected with people after the fact. But besides that, like it, it solved a legitimate aspect of society that I think people wanted but didn't know how to do before the technology came around. The metaverse just removes my butts and my legs and I don't get it. I, I don't know what Facebook is bringing to the table. If you have an obvious explanation that I'm missing when it comes to especially Facebook, like I understand that there are like implementations of Web3 that are, are going to be intuitive. We just haven't gotten there yet. But like Horizon Worlds, what is there that makes people go? Yes, this is the next step of what I need to connect with people or just fulfill my life. I just let me know down below in the comments while I let you know that Alexa shut down protocol order 66 uh, because Alexa.com is shutting down Amazon, getting rid of their web ranking system, which has been online for over 25 years. It's going to be gone as of May 1st, 2022. And Ford shutting down their reservation system on the F-150 Lightning, their electric pickup truck that's supposed to debut sometime next year. They're capping it at 200,000 with the CEO of Ford saying that they, they just have too many. They can't, they can't produce that many, so stop ordering them, please. But in case you want to go to their competitors like the Chevy Silverado EV, that's not going to get starting to produce until early 2023. So you're not any better off there. So that sucks. You know what also sucks is if you're in an emergency situation, you pick up your smartphone and you dial, you know, 911, you call them and then you find out, oh, hey, I have Microsoft Teams on my phone, but I didn't inst I didn't log into it. And now it's saying that I can't actually call emergency services, which is an actual bug that exists. If you have Microsoft Teams on an Android phone, 
phone and you have not logged in to Microsoft Teams, it can cause an unintended interaction, which makes it so that you can't dial 911. You can't dial emergency services, which is just insane. Anything from Android 10 or later is a problem. Microsoft's supposed to be implementing an update that can fix this as of January 4th, which is a long time to be without emergency services in case you need them. So in case you're not using Microsoft Teams app, get rid of it off your Android phone. Do not put yourself in this situation, especially if it like accidentally logs you out somehow or like Microsoft has to reset their keys and then everybody's Android phone that they use Microsoft Teams for is either log in or delete the app is probably the safest thing that you can do this year for yourself. And the safest thing that you can do to prepare for the future of AMD chips is just to buy a whole host of DDR5 memory. Oh, what's that? It's going for $3,000 on eBay for 32 gigs? Never mind. Anyways, the next generation Epic chips that we're expecting to be based on Zen 4, according to a Linux driver update, indicates that it's going to have 12 channels of DDR5 memory. Number one, with already the blazing fast speed you get of DDR5, adding in four more channels because previous Epic chips only supported eight channel memory. Now we're gonna have 12 channel memory. This is just gonna be a monster of a chip. We're expecting Zen 4 to take things to the next level. You got DDR5 taking things to the more extreme level. Hot dog. What a PC future we live in, my friends. And the future of this episode is to finish, to be done, to be complete, over, finalized, done, God, gone, gone, go away. Hot news over. See you Monday for more news of the tech things.